Mac Voices is supported by you, our viewers and listeners, through both our Patreon campaign and through your PayPal donations. Find out how you can support Mac Voices at macvoices.com slash support. Welcome back to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this time we get to talk to a Take Control author about a Take Control book that is is new but old, or sort of new but kind of old, or I don't I don't know. Michael Cohen is here. Michael, good to see you. Thanks so much for being here. <laughs> Hi, Chuck. I am both new and old myself. I've heard that. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard that. Um, <laughs> okay, this is going to be one of those interviews, folks. Michael is the author of the new take control of PDF pen. And the reason I said it's it's new but old is there have been PDF pen books from take control before, but this time this is about the brand new version of PDF pen. And I guess, Michael, you're going to change the titling a little bit now going forward? Yeah. Uh, for the last few years, we've been releasing a version of take control of PDF pen when a new version of PDF pen came out. And the book has always had the version number in the title, Take Control of PDF Pen 7, Take Control of PDF Pen 8, Take Control of PDF Pen 9 and 10. Uh, well, versional, PDF Pen's now going to 11. <laughs> and this book is now dropping that number from the title. It's now henceforth for subsequent releases, it's going to be Take Control of PDF Pen. This is Take Control of PDF Pen, the first edition. The next one will be the second edition and so on. The cover of the book will tell you what versions of the product it covers because there's also PDF pen for iPhone and iPad as well that the book covers. So just to be, I want to make sure people heard that so that the book not only covers the desktop version, but also the, um, also the iOS versions. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, <laughs> that's it in a nutshell. Okay. And for, forgive me folks, but I want to make sure we get the ground rules here, here straight. But Smile also publishes PDF Pen Pro. So right. it covers cover, both. It covers and both. Book covers everything. If it has PDF Pen in the name, <laughs> hmm? yes. If it, yeah, great. Okay. So now, having said all that, um, we're recording this just as PDF Pen 11 is dropping, um, along with the book, of course. And so. As a result, I have not seen anything about PDF Pen 11 and what the feature set is, again, as we record this. But you have, Michael. You've had the inside scoop. So tell us. I've been sworn to secrecy. It's been just like Game of Thrones. I haven't been able to release any details until now. (laughs) I don't see a Starbucks coffee cup anywhere on your desk, Michael. No, just just a hummingbird cup of tea. Okay. Okay. You know how hard it is to brew tea out of hummingbirds. First, you have to catch them. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> anyway, what what uh, is new with PDF Pen 11 and therefore with Take Control of PDF Pen? Uh, well, I cover some actually very exciting new features. Uh, you know, the, the edit bar that has appeared in PDF Pen Windows for a while now, it suddenly got taller, optionally taller, because if there's a menu choice to show a font bar as well that's part of the edit bar. So if you're editing imprints or, you know, messing with fonts you can now just quickly choose the fonts right from the bar choose alignments sizes stuff like that without having to go to a format menu or anything it's really convenient if you're doing that sort of thing but in addition and this is a kind of cool little feature if you have a pdf that has a bunch of fonts encoded in it you don't know what those fonts are you can select that text with pdf pen and the font bar will tell you what font you've selected so you can say, oh, that's what that font is, which wow. is kind of nice if you have to deal with that sort of thing. So <laughs> it's a fun feature and surprisingly versatile. So that's one. There's uh, The next thing is split view. And this uh, lets you divide the document window in two panes a main pane and a secondary pane, so you can look at two different parts of a PDF at the same time. Which is great, you know, if you're like, uh, I come from an academic background, and sometimes you get these academic papers that have endnotes, and so you're reading the PDF, and then you got to jump to the endnote, and then jump. Now you can split the screen, have the endnotes open on one pane, 
and have the uh, text in another. You can get pair two different graphic renderings on two different pages at the same time and so on. You can uh, do finds and have the finds appear in one window where you're looking at another section of the text. There's a lot of uses for it. And you can split the uh, screen either horizontally or vertically. I, I love the, that feature. I mean, it's something that I use in spreadsheet programs all the time because spreadsheets, for some reason, it seems to be used much more and make more sense there. Mm -hmm. But the, the idea about being able to do it in a PDF is is just as exciting. I wish more programs just across the board would adopt that kind of interface. I'm sure there are there are technical reasons it becomes a bit of a challenge, but that sounds like that might be a flagship it's, it's, a flagship feature. It, it's hard in a couple of different ways. Uh, some of them have to do with how do you design it so the user doesn't get horribly confused as to which pane of the screen is in charge at any one time. Um, writers love this sort of feature in word processes to support it, like uh, Scrivener, for example, lets you split the screen in all sorts of different ways. So you can look at all sorts of different parts of your novel at the same time as you're working on it. But you can sometimes get lost because you know, you've got so many little panes of information open, which one is in charge? So, you know, you need to build a user interface that lets people navigate it easily <laughs> and yet provides the versatility that they want. That's not a simple problem to design. So that's why more programs don't do it. Plus just the code overhead and what happens if two, if the two panes are showing the same part of the document and you're editing in one, does the other one change as well? Does it show you what was there? All sorts of decisions to be made. So. Yeah, Good ask what, why it isn't implemented more. That's why. <laughs> oh, well, I want it, so that's all I can tell you. <laughs> no, it, it has been implemented in a number of word processes, not just Scrivener, uh, Nicest Writer, which we use to write or take control books, lets you do the same sort of things, but the pain. There's other word processors that do it as well. It's, you know, a great feature, but it's a non-trivial one. It's not the very first thing you implement when you're designing a new word processor. Right. And I'm not surprised that Nicest Writer would have it. I mean, I, I, it's been a long time since I've looked at Nicest Writer, but I think Nicest Writer has everything. <laughs> Every feature known to man, I swear. Boy, oh, boy, howdy. You, you can go real deep into that program. And Joe, who runs Take Control Books, actually used to be, you know, in head of documentation for Nicest years ago and knows that program seven ways from Sunday and can make it do amazing things. That's one of the reasons we use it. But I digress from PDF. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we have uh, we have the split screen. We have the edit bar. What other new features do we have? Um, it's not a major feature, but it's kind of an important one if you're moving objects around on a PDF. Uh, a, a previous version gave you alignment guides. So when you start moving stuff around, the thing you're moving around could detect when it's near other objects and could give you alignment guides and would snap to it. And that's really good, you know, to help you place things on a PDF that you're constructing in this program. But it can be a pain in the butt if sometimes those alignment guides get in your way. So this version of PDF Pen now lets you turn them off and on. Again, not a huge feature, but an important one. Let me see. I'm going to go actually look at the manuscript here because <laughs> it actually has a part of the document that says what's new in PDF Pen. Ah. The library, you know, the place where you can uh, put various things you've written so you can have like your signature in the library and drag it into different PDFs when you have to sign a document. The library now lets you add multiple objects to it at once. You can select four or five things on a page and drag them into the library and they'll all go in. So you don't have to do onesie, twosie, threesie. Minor detail, but it's important. And if you have PDF Pen Pro, which lets you build forms, you can now add text box form elements directly into the library. So if you have a interestingly out text entry form that you use in forms that you build, you can now store them in the library and use them and they retain all their settings in the library. So that, that's a nice thing. Uh, let's see, what else, what else? Uh, ah, page numbering. There's now when you, when you produce a PDF when you print it out. You've got much more control over the left and right margin about where the page numbers appear. You can go all the way to the very edge of the page 
and hope your printer can support it if you're planning to print it, but you have complete control over where those page margins appear horizontally and vertically. Uh, and finally, and, and this is a feature that's partly courtesy of Apple and the latest revisions of Mac OS and iOS, and that's continuity camera, which lets you, if you have, uh, oh, let's say one of these guys, you know, which has a camera in it, and uh, you need to take a picture, but you really need it on your Mac. Continuity camera lets your iOS device and your Mac talk together. So you can actually have a menu item on your Mac that says import image from iPhone, and you can take a picture with your iPhone and insert it directly in a document. PDF Pen now supports continuity camera and it lets you do two different things. If you've got a PDF and you want to insert a photo in it of something that's like right in front of you, let's say you're building a little PDF of items you want to sell on eBay. So you got them all lined up on a table nicely right next to your computer so you can write about them and you want to have pictures of them. You use continuity camera with your iPhone. You can take that snapshot and insert it directly into the PDF on your screen in PDF pen all in one go. Make sense? Did Makes you completely sense. lose the narrative thread there? No, no, I'm I'm right there with you. And and I know that we've talked about continuity camera in, in other programs before. Right. And I, I admit that that at first I didn't get it. But in fact, just earlier this week I had a particular situation where I needed a photo of something that, like you said, is right beside me. And rather than take the photo and then try to airdrop it or have to email it, just take the picture and insert it right in the document. So, you know, that's yeah. a feature not to be overlooked. Well, Al, here's the here's, uh, continuity camera part two. One of the options is to use the camera as a scanner, Ooh. which means that you can uh, have a document on your desk next to you. You don't have a, a scanner for some reason. It, it blew up or the driver wasn't upgraded to work with Mojave or whatever. Uh, you can actually use your cam your phone camera to take images of pages one after another and it assembles them into a scan it identifies the page area so you can adjust the page margins and it gets imported directly into pdf pen and then pdf pen clever boots that it is will say oh this is scanned would you like me to ocr it for you <laughs> so suddenly you can uh, put a document on your desk take a picture of it with your iphone camera and get an OCR on your Mac. Without having to do the email or airdrop thing. Just exactly. It just it happens all in one go. You open up a PDF document. You say, I want to import a scan here. Pick up your camera. Take a shot. It pops up. There you are. So what am I running? Or am I running an app on my phone to a companion app? Or how's that working? <laughs> How it works is the moment. On your Mac, when you say import from iPhone, your iPhone, which has to be close to your Mac and Bluetooth enabled and with the latest iOS, of course, it just turns on with the camera showing ready to rock and roll. Hmm. That's really interesting. So no permissions involved or anything? It just recognizes... What through through iCloud or through my Apple ID? Because if I'm, I'm thinking in it's an office, you're, stand, you're standing next to your computer and it's got a Bluetooth connection, so it detects your phone. It knows what your phone is. It, you're authenticated already because you're there. You're on your own machine. Right, but where I'm okay, but where I'm going with this is so. What if there are three of us standing around my desk working on a document? Again, and, and it's all... detecting it through Bluetooth. It's using Bluetooth and Wi-Fi for this. Right. But the point is it's not getting you into the phone anywhere other than the camera app to take the picture and to send the scan to the Mac that you've already signed into, you're already logged into. So there's really no security issue involved because... Uh, okay, I got it. I got it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, nothing, yeah. nothing's staying on your phone or your, or your iPad for that matter. It works with an iPad or an iPod Touch as well if right. they have the right software and they've got the current version of Bluetooth happening. Hmm. 
I like this. I like and, that a lot. And again, it's, it's it's because you're standing right there. You know, you're not doing it from halfway around the country. You're doing it from, you know, three feet away. If that. that that's one of those features that almost sounds like magic. And it, that's it, why I had to ask about it. Because like, <laughs> okay, you know, being geeks, we want to know if it works. But <clears throat> funny thing is, when, when I first tried it out to use it in the book, you know, I did it the first time and I went, this is magic. That's exactly what I said. It's just like, how easy was this to put a picture in, you know, in the PDF? <laughs> and now with these high resolution screens on the Mac, you could bring up an ebook, take a picture of a page and scan it in and pirate the book page at a time that way. <laughs> if you want to spend a few hours and get less than, you know, perfect results, but still. Right. It's actually a good way, you know, to get text of non-text documents you'd otherwise not be able to keep. Um, I, but I know the, the folks at Smile rely on on their their customers to send in feature ideas or feature requests, and mm -hmm. and so that some of these had to have a genesis there. But there are also some things here that I'd be hard pressed to say, just like that one that um, that a user would think of to, to ask for. Um, yeah. And yet, you know, they found a way to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's again something that Apple, you know, developed to help sell more of these, <laughs> and also to help sell more Macs because making them work together is a big win for them. If you get a whole ecosystem that all the devices work together, that's good for your bottom line because yeah. people will buy all of those devices. But at the same time, when you have that, you've also got the synergy where they work together seamlessly and flawlessly. You know, I mean, my, my Mac can talk to my HomePod speakers, you know, so can my phone, so can my iPad. They can talk to each other, they can exchange information. You know, I was looking at how many Wi-Fi devices I have around the house now, and it suddenly turned out to be 10 or 11 or 12 because I've got an iPad, an old iPad, an iPhone, an Apple Watch, a Mac, two HomePod speakers, an Apple TV, and then a, a Wi-Fi bridge to a, a, a light switch and another Wi-Fi bridge to another light switch. They're all on my network. Yeah. I know I have... Um... I have one of the wireless network systems and the app on the phone will show you all the devices on your, on your Wi-Fi, <laughs> And it's, it's kind of surprising. You, you know, you, if, if somebody said, is that on your Wi-Fi?" You'd say, yeah. But when you see them all aggregated together, it's like, Holy cow, I have a lot of stuff here. And, you know, I didn't realize my, uh, my, my Wi-Fi was doing that much duty, but it really is. There's a lot of devices hanging out there whispering back and forth to another one another and you can't hear what they're saying. Yeah. Well, and, and in this case, your phone is whispering to your Mac about what to put in PDF pen. So the, and in fact, it's whispering on two different channels. I mean, it's using Wi-Fi, but it's also using Bluetooth. Mm, which are good point. two wireless technologies for the price of one. Yeah. <laughs> So this sounds like a pretty decent update to PDF Pen um, for PDF it, Pen. It's not a bad one, certainly. You know, and of course, you know, there's the usual just little polishing and refining of things as well that they they do every time they do an update. But yeah, th this is a good one. It was a fun one to write about as well, partly because the appearance of the app has not changed that much, other than you know the addition of the font bar, which you can hide and show. Almost everything looks exactly the same, which meant I didn't have to reshoot all of the screenshots from the last edition, which really saved time. But it also means that you get a lot of nice new features, but you don't have to learn everything from scratch. Everything works the way it did with the version you now have. So you get the update, you'll know your way around. You can just play with the new features. And again, you know, when, when a program hits uh, version 11, at some point you think, you know, okay, so how much more can they do with it to improve it? And yet, every time Smile brings out a new version of PDF Pen, there are one or two killer features there that, it, at least for the way I use it, mm -hmm. those, those one or two are, are more than enough to upgrade. And I'm sure that there are one or two others that I don't use that you might use mm -hmm. that 
are a good reason to upgrade. Oh, yeah. Um, this is a smart company that, that treats their customers pretty much fairly. And you can see that because you don't have to buy my book. They give it away. <laughs> I, I was going to get to that. Yeah, that this <laughs> this is this is a prime way for you to, first of all, sample the take control style, to sample Michael's style, but also to get documentation for a terrific new uh, new version of PDF Pen, because the book is free. And it's not a small thing. It's a 200, over 200 pages long, because there's a lot to cover. And it also gives you an introduction to, you know, exactly what a PDF is and how PDFs came to be what they are. You know, which is an interesting story in its own right, because PDFs began almost exactly at the same time in history that HTML began. <laughs> they were two different solutions to the same question, which is, how can people on a network exchange textual information with one another, keeping it in a standard form? And also, it solves a, a business problem yeah. of being able, able to have documents at least to some degree. I mean, PDF Pen defeats this in some ways, but that's sort of its purpose. But, you know, you want the formatting to stay intact. And mm -hmm. if possible, you'd like to keep them immutable at some point. But Well, know, there, are, there are ways to keep a PDF immutable if you really want to keep them immutable. But the, the big selling point is the original document, even if you can mess with it later is that it replicates as exactly as it can how it would look if it were a printed document. Right. And that's really important for a lot of legal and business reasons. You know, if your contracts all look the same and have the same headers and footers and layout, and, you know, if you <laughs> don't have to say, oh, the pagination is different because you made the page, this page larger, uh, PDF gets around all that. It keeps, you know, all the things intact. It keeps the graphics intact, the text intact, the fonts intact. It's a good format, you know, for legacy documents. And even today's PDF readers can read PDFs that came out back when PDFs originated in the early 90s. That's that's a good point. And, and it, I'm not going to say that they will last forever, but they have a pretty good chance of, of lasting a lot longer than certain word document formats or some other document formats that have evolved and you have to jump through hoops to open those legacy formats. It's true. PDFs, uh, the PDF architecture is extensible so you can add things to a PDF that aren't realized in the specification, but the specification itself is an ISO standard. Now it used to be curated by Adobe, but it's now an ISO standard, which means that, you can rely upon it being the base being accessible going forward as well. Which is just one more reason that you should be looking at something like PDF pen mm -hmm. and looking at something like Michael's book to learn how to use it because PDFs are going to be around probably longer than, than you and I, Michael put together. It's a handy way to store uh, information of all sorts, you know, that, needs to be in a docu in a document format in a page format right. my good my goodness you know all, all my receipts and everything you know they're all scanned turned into PDFs and stored inside of this archive so I can look at my bills and my receipts and like that come tax season and I'm not looking you know a typed in summary but the actual document itself because it's there yeah and, and there are not many programs that don't give you some option I mean, they want to work their magic within the program itself, but at some point they usually give you an option to export out to a lot of things. Mm -hmm. One of which is always PDF because it's, mm -hmm. it's the lingua franca of, of computer documents. If, if you can print it on your Mac, you can make a PDF out of it. I mean, right. that's actually built into the print dialog. You can print to PDF. Yep. So, yeah. Um, so takecontrolbooks.com, this version of Take Control of PDF Pen is new. It's got documents, documentation of all the features, along with all the other 
um, versions of PDF Pen, PDF Pen Pro, um, and PDF Pen Scan Plus for iOS. Uh, what am I missing, Michael? Oh, it's PDF Pen for iPad and iPhone. I, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yes, that's right. Um, and it's all free. So it's just sitting there waiting well, for you. The to book do. is the, the, the book software is. you may have to pay for. Yeah, but the book is, and and again, I think it's a. I, I love the fact that you do, you all do, occasionally sponsored books or free books. That way, folks can get a look at the take control method of approaching things, which I still think is one of the best ones out there to help people get up and running and make use of whatever the particular program is. Well, what we what we try to do in these books is uh, go a little bit beyond what the help file would give you for a program. I don't think there's anything I cover in my book that really isn't covered in the help that PDF pen gives you from Smile, but we provide a lot of context and here's why you might want to do this and here's maybe why you shouldn't want to do that and you get a lot more context and a lot more uh, explanation of why this would matter to you. And it does matter. Yeah. It definitely does that, matter. That's the whole point of taking control of something. It's not just, you know, you uses manual but right. how to control the dark and pdfs are in everyone's life I mean, one they way are. or another you know whether you're in business or whether you're just at home um pdfs are probably you're probably receiving uh attachments via email with pdfs i mean they're just they're everywhere you can't get away from them so this is so this, true this will let you know just what you can do and how powerful you can do it with a program that is really approachable and and is produced by smile and of course, I do need to say, and I should have said it earlier, sorry, um, that Smile is a sponsor of Mac Voices, um, but that's not why we talk about their products. I, I talk about them because I love them, and I talk with Michael because I know he loves them and he's he wants to help you get more out of them. So, Well, you know, I wrote books about Smile stuff before they were sponsoring the books, and I have a, a sneaking suspicion that one reason that Smile is one of your sponsors is because you like Smile. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, but you know, it, I mean, it didn't come about like, oh, we'll give you money. You said, oh, well, then maybe I'll look into your products. It was sort of the other way around, I would think. Yeah, and and also, I mean, because I, I talk about plenty of products that are not sponsors of Mac Voices, but right. you know, my thing is, I talk about things that work, and and I have mm -hmm. no problem telling someone that this is what I use. And when mm -hmm. I say I use PDF Pen regularly, I do. When I say I use Text Expander multiple times an hour every single day i do mm -hmm. and, and I, I just i really I, not only that but i respect the company and i respect their reputation and the way they approach things so it's a win-win they, they have been a delight to work with in all the various incarnations of the book so you know next time they come up with another update to pdf pen i'll be there yep yep Michael, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for your efforts on this. Um, and, and and thanks to Smile for a new version of PDF Pen 11, uh, or a new version of PDF Pen, which is PDF Pen 11. Um, are you working on anything else you can tell us about or just lots of stuff you can't tell us about? <laughs> well, let's see. You know, I, I'd come out with a revision of my Pages book not too long ago, and then Apple hit us with another revision too. I work, so I'm working on yet another revision to take control of Pages, which is like, <laughs> the Moby Dick of take control books. It's you know, 300 billion pages long at this point. Wow. Because it covers the Mac version of pages, the iOS version of pages, and the browser version of pages. So every time Apple updates the iWork suite, it means that, oh, good, I get to revisit this mammoth, <laughs> mammoth document, this war and peace of books. <laughs> and, well, that's good because that means you'll be back here soon to talk about that once that update is finished. That's right. That That's true. I, I look forward to the day when I finished it because I know the day I finish it, Apple will come out with another update. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll just keep us going. You know, That's good. It's that's a perpetual motion machine of torture. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, thanks so much. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Chuck. Take care. We'll talk soon. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Please go and check out PDF Pen 11. And at least as importantly, go check out Take Control of PDF Pen to get an idea of what it can do for you. If you're, if you're on the bubble about purchasing it, 
take a look at the documentation and, and the book. It's free. Why not? TakeControlBooks.com. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode you will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.